So VX model's nice in that it is everything is in within the work space of uh, VX elements, which is CreateForm software. So you scan in VX elements, that software comes with the scanner, and the VX model is an additional module for purchase uh, that will allow you to reverse engineer. Much less expensive than DesignX. Um, doesn't quite, you know, it, this is a really nice option if you have a lot of geometric parts. And then if you're surfacing, simply requires you doing NURB surfaces or or extracting what we call mesh fit surfaces that don't need a parametric um, features behind them. So we can, uh, this is just a very quick software to use. You, everything's in one interface, it's really nice. And uh, I'll show you how that works here. This will be our next one, but you know, you can see we've got this this tube here that we can pull a few features off of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull up our VX, um, your VX model interface. So again, this module, this is VX element, this is within VX element. So this is the CreaForm software, and this is kind of generally what their software layout looks like. So I've got a few features, I've already got it aligned, and I have a few things already done just for time sake or time purposes. Uh, that I'll show you, you know, what the end result is. But I have a few features already selected. The way this software works is you have your geometric features over here. So if I want to grab a plane, I'm going to grab that plane. And instead of breaking the mesh up into regions ahead of time and checking the accuracy with the accuracy analyzer, we can apply a plane to a, what it thinks is a planar surface. You can see the color map, the high and low areas of that plane. And when I click the, when I click OK, it applies a plane to that face. Now, if I want the thickness of this flange, I can immediately apply a plane to the back face of it. You can see there. Now, I want those two to be parallel because this is basically just a, a cut out piece of metal. So I can control my parameters in here so I can, I can control the normal of that new plane by making it parallel, oops, to plane three. Okay, so now those are perfectly parallel, which will be important in our reverse engineering software. We really wanna build our constraints over here because what you see we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer these individual features to SolidWorks and then use SolidWorks to basically stitch them together. So the same thing happens with the cylinder. So if I wanna pull all these cylindrical holes, I can click on them, okay? It's gonna pull the cylinder in there. It's gonna give me a diameter. I can adjust that diameter. So if I just want it 0.4 inches, I can adjust the length because I want this to be, I want this cylinder basically in order of operations. I wanna cut the cylinder out of the flange. So I want it to be longer than the flange. That way it cuts all the way through. So if I make it half an inch, you can see there just just protrudes all the way through. I'm gonna make sure that it goes all the way through. So I'm gonna do 0.75, okay? And then last step is I can make sure that orientation again is square with plane three. And so now everything, the front of this flange, the back of this flange and the through hole are all in the same exact orientation. So I can say okay, and then that will hold for the next one and, and so on. All right. Uh, again, I can also pull the inner and outer uh, circles over here. So I'm going to uncheck length, uncheck diameter, and uncheck orientation. And we're going to pull a new cylinder off of that center area there. Uh, again, I'm going to make sure that the length is a little bit longer. So it pulls all the way through the part. And then when we put another cylinder on the outside here, I can fix the axis to be concentric with cylinder six. So now I have that and I can adjust the length to pull it down to the right height, okay? So I'm not gonna go through every single one of those features there, but the way that we grab this outer tube here, you know, in the other, in Design X, I would do a loft wizard and I would loft those sections down the tube. So I have a parametric tube. We don't really have that option in here. What we have is a NURB surface. So it just depends on what you need. So I'm gonna hide that. And I'm going to show, I've already got those done. I, if I copy and paste just the geometry of the tube, I have some, some you know, different optimization and editing tools over here for my mesh. So I can fill in that hole and that hole that were you know, other geometry 
to make those seamless and make it because what you want to do is you want to get a nice clean mesh with the loft wizard and the previous one you could have gaps and things like that this the derp surface is going to be basically a, a shrink wrap of the mesh so you want your mesh nice and clean and you want it uh, free of holes we can also make sure that our boundaries are smooth and then we can extend the mesh here Oop, i didn't do the right one that shell so I can do extend boundary. So I can click on that boundary. And let's say I want to extend it half an inch to pull it outside of the part. I can extend that mesh outward. Okay. And same thing with the bottom. And I can surface all the way out to that edge. That way I've got plenty of, uh, plenty of stuff to work with. Okay. Now to do the inside, depending if you have a, a, enough scan of the inside, you know, pre preferably I would, I would use that. On this one, I've actually offset the interior, um, the thickness that I know it needs to be, so I can, I can wrap that. But you see the exterior actually did a hole fill on the end, but that's fine. What we end up with is this surface here. So this is a NURB surface. This takes a minute to calculate, so I'm just gonna show you here. But this auto surface, this wraps a surface, a very clean, nice surface, if the mesh is clean, on top of the mesh, and we can utilize that for our geometry. So that's how VX model works. It's a very simple, but yet very powerful program because it has all these different features we can easily extract. We can, can, we can do cross sections, I didn't show that, but if I want the profile, let me hide these here. If I want the profile of this outer flange here, we can pull a cross section of it so I'm going to use the plane three and then pull this in kind of like we did the mesh sketch earlier. And you can see it's going to grab a cross section on that. Okay. Now all these features, once we get done, we can right click on them. I'll select a few right click and we'll say transfer to, I've got SolidWorks installed so I can throw it over there. We've got Inventor, Fusion 360, and Solid Edge. Any of those, we can transfer these features. And what you'll see, I'm going to actually bring up SolidWorks. So I've already transferred this. Again, save a little time. I am cutting to it, but we transfer the features over here. This is what you end up getting. And I've done one extrude already, so I'm going to do the second one. But what we have is we got our cross sections here. We've got our cylinders. we got our nerve surfaces, all that. So this is everything... Uh, dumped over to SolidWorks and if I were to look at any given cylinder you can see there's a plane and there's a sketch associated with it so all these are parametric features so we're still keeping parametric which is really nice all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this upper flange profile and I'm going to make sure I don't want it to merge yet and now we're working in SolidWorks so if you're very comfortable with SolidWorks this is a nice option uh, we're going to go uh, up to surface. I'm going to click that plane and then we're going to do direction two up to surface. I'm going to click that back plane to make the flange. Okay. And once we have all the geometry ready to go, what we're going to do is insert features combine. We're going to do an add, uh, additive combine. I'm going to do the top flange, the bottom flange, the center surface there as well as that that you know pipe that's coming off of the side of it so we're going to merge all those together and then we're going to utilize the geometry that we transferred over for all the negative space to cut so we'll do one more insert features combine and we'll do a subtract main body all right we got the main body bodies to subtract we're going to do all three cylinders down there all of these now i have this inner surface we can't use a combine for that because it's a surface we'll take care of that in just a moment but everything else we're going to cut out with the combine all of our solid bodies all right there we go and now the last step insert cut with surface we got one single body and one single surface so this i shouldn't have to select anything I just do an auto cut and here we go. So that's going to cut that inside out. So we're going to get the same results as we would have in Design X. Depending on the features, maybe they take a little longer. The, the only thing is we, the, the surface here 
um, you know, these, these freeform surfaces are going to be done a little bit differently. They're going to be a nerve surface. So at the end of the day, we can't really edit these. The only things we could do is basically rebuild them using sections in SolidWorks. Um, so that's the big difference between the two. But other than that, geometric stuff works awesome. It's super fast to grab the data, super easy to transfer over. That's the workflow for VX model. So a little bit different than DesignX, okay? But we're accomplishing the same thing. So I'm gonna jump back over to my presentation. Okay, there we go. And so that's demonstration three. Oh, one thing I wanna show at the end of the day, we can take this CAD file, okay? If I do a file, save as, and I export my um, I just file here, so, or I'll just do a step, either one, uh, VX model example. I can actually bring that back into VX model. So as soon as that saves out of there, and I can do a comparison in this software. So we can compare, once we get that final model, we can do a full model compare or even a scan to scan compare in v VX model as well. So if I do a file import reference and I go find go to my desktop here, okay. We import that CAD file. This should be all done. We can always go back and we can check and see what we've what we've accomplished in the past, or you know what we've accomplished in our in our other program. So, all right. Well, that may take a minute to import. Um, if it if it imports, we can always. Oh, here we go. All right, here we are. So now we've got our CAD file underlying, you know, on our scan data there. If I hide all my entities, just so we just have the scan and the CAD. At this point now, we can compare, uh, and we're talking about the CAD, to example one surface mesh. Okay, and essentially we're looking at what we have as the accuracy analyzer. So a very cool feature that's still included in VX model. All right, that is not what I'm looking for. Okay, so in here we've imported the CAD and we're gonna click on example one. Yeah, that's the that's just the main scan. Okay, and we can compare that. Let me hide that inner surface there. So we can compare our scan to VX model example, which is that um, which is that solid body. And you can see there if I hide the CAD file, you can see the area. So that you know the inner and outer the, the inlet or whatever is uh, not quite the same thing, but you can see how close that we kept everything um, throughout the part. And then you can adjust these values here. So that's, you know, if we want this to be much tighter, you know, if we want to check to, uh, let's say, 5 thousandths of an inch, there we go. Now it's a bit more telling. You can see there we still have some radii. This back face isn't quite as planar as our real part. But yeah, that, that looks great. So you can always go back and you can check your geometry in this software as well. Okay, so I'm gonna close that down and we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint here. So 